Good morning, Jax. This is Fahad. Today is Friday, February 19th. Let's get started. I want to start off with the Arista network because all of JAG Pro clients have the diagonal call spread that we recommended in webinar yesterday. This is going to be a right on the target, exactly what we expected. So first of all, if you look at what the actual trade was that was presented yesterday in webinar, here it is. Um, and we recommended buying the diagonal spread, which was buy the April 320 calls and sell the February 325 calls against them for a net cost of 10 to $11 debit, um, given the wide bid and ask spreads. And this was with stock trading yesterday at $309 per share. And I had done all the math and calculation in front of you in webinar with a view that this thing is going to go to 325 to 330 that's exactly what's happening in pre-market this stock has a bid in pre-market of 325 in the ask of 330 so this is a sweet spot for this diagonal spread it should easily double from ten dollars to twenty dollar plus maybe even as high as 25 dollars so on this move higher take profits and step aside now, with that said, though, I do want to reflect on this quarter real quick because this the bull case for Arista Network was originally presented in the Jaguar first quarter outlook in exceptional detail. Um, and I'm now looking at this quarter to see if my bull case is playing out as I had hoped. And this is going actually even beyond my expectations, given the very strong V-shaped recovery that we are seeing in the IT spending, in the corporate IT spending environment for hardware. Um, this company went from posting negative 13% year-over-year revenue growth in the third quarter to an increase of 17.4% year-over-year growth in the fourth quarter. So that's a more than 30% um, turnaround or 3,000 basis uh, turnaround from Q3 to Q4 as that pent-up demand came back for the IT hardware products in, in co by corporate enterprise customers. The product revenues, which is which represents about 20% of the total revenues, were, were strong across the board in every single category. And also the service revenues, which represents 20% of the total revenues, we're up 24% year-over-year year across the whole category. If you break it down by geographically, the Americas, which represents 74% of total revenues, grew by 15.8% year-over-year. And International, which was a lagging uh, seg um, uh, segment of the market, was up a very healthy 22% year-over-year. I'm not talking about sequential quarter-over-quarter. Quarter. I'm talking about year-over-year over, year over here. And so very, very strong turnaround. And the most important thing, you will see there are multiple analysts that are upgrading this stock this morning. They all seem to now recognize exactly what I had discussed in the Jaguar first quarter outlook, which is they are now seeing the campus switching market coming back with very, very strong growth led by the 400G cycle, which is still at the beginning stages and will gradually ramp up further in the first half of 2021 based on the very comments that the company made in its earnings transcript um, yesterday, last night. And so based on that, um, so for example, Microsoft, which is a very key customer, went from negative 10% decline for the, the, the growth in the, from that big customer to now about to inflect to positive. Facebook is doing about exactly the same thing. And so we're going to see more and more better and better growth from Arista Network, especially because the comps are going to remain easy for this stock. And I think that any pullback in this name, especially during the first half of 2021, which is the sweet spot of growth acceleration, will continue to present to buying opportunities. And so take the profits today, but don't give up on this one. Look for any pullbacks and opportunities to get back in. Ultimately, I could see this thing heading all the way back to $400 per share. <clears throat> so that's Arista Network. The second stock I wanna quickly discuss is one of our favorite names, which finally, finally, fingers crossed, I believe um, this is now about to break out materially uh, on a long-term scale and that's Everbridge, symbol EVBG. First of all, if you look at the daily chart, you will see that this has been a 
um, big shop fest, really constantly failing around 100 and 155 dollars per share multiple times that has made this attempt. You can see the zigzag action going on for a long period of time. All right. Well, in pre-market, the stock report company reported earnings yesterday. It closed at 140 yesterday and is trading at 154 today. So it's up 10% in pre-market. And if you go back to the daily scale, 154 puts you right here. I think we're about to see the breakout finally after a long period of zigzag consolidation. And if you go to the weekly scale, this is a long-term weekly scale. This is the very nice bull flag formation. The stock closed right here. It's going to open right about here, basically breaking out from the weekly bull flag. I think this thing is going to take out 60, maybe even go as high as 170 rather very, very quickly. And ultimately now I think this thing, this is going to $200 per share. So it's been, it's a, it's a character is, it's the, it's the characteristic of how long this stock is consolidated and unable to break out. And then the kind of earnings that we saw from this company last night, which should now lead to a breakout moment eventually. And so let me read a couple things over here that stood out for me from this quarter. The company reported very strong end to the year, which was supported by, I quote, record customer and deal metrics. The company added 18 more CEM customers in the quarter. They closed 66 deals of more than $100,000 of annual contract value. And while posting a trailing 12-month average selling price of 77,000, which significantly improved from the prior quarter, the company signed on a brand new uh, and a very large customer, which is the state of Oregon. That was a seven-figure deal for the company, and this means that now company has signed very large deals for the mass notification. Uh, bringing its total number of contracts it has it has with seven of the 50 states in the United States. So that means that they still have significant room ahead to continue to expand into the states that they're not serving yet. Going back to the total number of customers, CEM customers that they added, they now have a total of 128 customers. And so on a sequential quarter over quarter basis, that's up from um, 116 to now 128. The total new enterprise customers that the company has is now 140. They added, sorry, 146 customers in a single quarter, which was sharp acceleration from 90 something from the past quarter. They now have a total enterprise customer count of 5,613, which is a new record high for the company. And then lastly, the company uh, blend this all together. Revenues for the quarter were up 32% year over year, reaching 75.6 million and easily beating the consensus view of 72.5 million. Billings were up 30%. Bookings were up 29% with given sizable multi-million dollar renewals that came in the fourth quarter as well. And to put it all together, the company easily increased its guidance for Q1 as well. And their EBITDA loss guidance was sharply cut to now what is expected only $400,000 EBITDA loss in the first quarter versus $1.6 million EBITDA loss that many had been expecting because they are now starting to see the benefit of margins improving from economies of scale. Put it all together, this was absolutely fantastic quarter on so many metrics. While the consensus has been very, um, very low on this one because they have been watching this stock not perform for so long. And so this is what becomes basically breakout moments for, for the stock. Expect this to take out all of this congestion, congestion, and who knows, maybe this could be heading towards $200 per share um, within the next six months or so. So I really like this name. I think you're going to see far more upside. All right, that's it from me. Let's go to Jay. Morning, everyone. Uh, so yeah, just quickly on Everbridge. Um, you know, I do own the stock, uh, full disclosure on that one. I've owned it for a long time. Um, but I know Stiefel noted that, that that win in Oregon was due to wildfire activity over the past year. So actually that that brings me to, and I don't, I don't know if they've won the state of Texas, but I wonder if, you know, they could potentially win some contracts in that state due to the 
recent events that have happened. Um, but you know, we'll have to wait and find out about that one. Sounds good. I know they have deals with Florida and California, yes. which are big states for the company. Yes. So, um, yeah. Uh, so the stock that I want to provide a quick update on today is Aspen Aerogels, ticker ASPN. Yep. Uh, the stock is down pre-market, uh, and this is after their earnings report yesterday after the close. Uh, so I can kind of break this down into two parts. Um, so first of all, total revenue was down 28%. And the decrease in revenue was driven by what management called a broad-based decrease in both project and maintenance work in their global energy infrastructure market, as well as the impact of their decision to wind down their research services business. So if we take a look at energy infrastructure, the decline there was strictly because their energy customers have uh, basically limited the number of third-party insulation installers at their facilities due to COVID restrictions. Uh, so total shipments for the year were down 30%, while average selling prices were actually up by 4%. Um, so the company has pyrogel, cryogel products that they use for uh, you know this industry, and they do have... Um, upcoming projects for several petrochemical LNG companies, but you know, you're not going to see that revenue opportunity until these, you know, restrictions go away. Um, so you, you have to be patient with that one. Um, but the the main reason why I had brought this stock up back in mid-December was because of the EV exposure the company has. Um, on the last call, the company talked about how they uh, announced a major U.S. automotive OEM award uh, that that's going to use their pyro thin product. And from what management said, they started to supply this product to the customer in 2020. Um, and based upon projections for 20, 2021 and 2022, they're only expecting to generate single digit millions of dollars. But then in 2023, that's when they expect the customer to, you know, substantially ramp up and thus causing a jump in revenue. Um, they highlight in 2024, they're expecting 150 million just from this customer alone. And over the coming decade, the potential revenue would be approximately 1 billion. So, you know, this is a, it's just one customer. Uh, we, we still don't know who that customer is um but you you know you have to be patient with this one and the other part that management talked about was you know they continue to hear about and and see recalls and regulatory pressure you know for you know ev safety essentially so they are participating in a number of rfqs or request for quotations with other ev companies um, and management talked about how there are 30 companies right now in that funnel. Um, so, you know, the potential for more contracts is there. Um, and they are, they're also talking about expanding to include companies producing energy storage systems. Uh, so it looks like they can uh, pivot away as well to, um, you know, to other industries, not just automotive. Um, but overall, when you take a look at this quarter, you know, I don't want to call it a disappointment, but um, it's one that you just have to be patient with, especially right now because they're focused specifically on one EV customer, and that that EV customer isn't going to really ramp up for a couple of years. Um, so this is just one you'll have to keep an eye on. Every earnings report you'll have to read and and you know see where they stand. Yeah, and I first, I'll give you my quick thoughts on this one. So first of all, if you go to Jaguar Media and you search for ASPN, you will see that this was on December 17th, right over here, when this bull case was presented. We saw unusual call buying at the time, and we discussed this stock the first time there. And the company makes these protective films to stop lithium ion fires, you know, in electric vehicles and all that. So the first time we discussed. Now, let's be honest with you. Um, you know, since then, the stock ran up straight, right? I mean, it went from $16 per share, which was right over here, going into earnings or a few days before earnings, this was hitting 26, 27. So the, on a percentage basis, this stock in just a matter of two and a half months was up 60%. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. And I know we had a, we had fielded a lot of cushions in the chat room from clients during this time, and we continue to recommend owning it. And the stock had a fantastic rally. So I think people are sitting on pretty fat profits. Now, mm -hmm. it's down a little bit. And I think the easiest way to explain this is, is basically profit taking, sure. which is completely expected. But the second thing is also the reason why I'm not worried about 20 percent some decline in revenues in Q4 is because this is the kind of stuff that's going to be transitory in nature when we know that the the economy is going to continue to ramp higher with the reopening theme yep and secondly um the auto cycle is in full swing anybody looking at that static data from last quarter and then wondering whether this thing is done is basically completely not paying attention to how the ev is a game changer and we're seeing improving usr data and all of that and it's going to be more and more future, better growth going forward sequentially. So I think the pullback is going to present another buying opportunity, but probably not today. Maybe these to, maybe needs to take another week or two to build a new base around 20 to $22 per share. And from there, we could have a new setup for the next leg higher. We need to see some of this wash out in the MACD and the RSI lines have to come down. They have to correct. They have to get back to the neutral state. And then we could have another setup at that point. Sounds good. So my quick thoughts on that one. All right, let's go to Chronicle. Morning. I have two things today. Uh, first off, keep keep an eye on Weemi Hologram Cloud, ticker WIMI. Uh, this is an augmented reality solutions provider in China. As Fahad knows, I've been wanting to do a Chinese tech demystified video uh, on this company. i uh, just been waiting for the right time. Um, but I'm bringing this up right now because a very important press release came out overnight in which the company has won the bidding for the second phase of China Mobile and Media Cloud Platform's remote uh, interaction holographic project. And it should go without saying that China Mobile is the largest mobile telco and also the largest operator of 5G mobile infrastructure in China. So this is a huge win for Weimi, which is making under $50 million in annualized sales. So a contract like this is a major boost. Um, I, I think this is probably also going to open up more opportunities uh, for the company within the 5G space. Meanwhile, uh, one of the core pillars of my bull case is to do with the company's recent breakthrough in automotive sensors, uh, where their sensors are now capable of reading 500 data points, uh, give or take, instantaneously versus industry average of 40. So. So this is going to help them win uh, contracts down the road um, in that industry. So just giving a quick heads up here, uh, WeMe is going to be the next Chinese tech demystified video. And if the price action is favorable in the meantime, I wouldn't be afraid to jump into this one uh, myself before the video goes out. Uh, one quick thing. Do you know on top of your head what the company's total annual revenue base looks like today or basically based on uh, trailing 12 months, for example? So, uh, like I said, it's 50 million in annualized sales. Right. So, 50 million dollars in annualized sales. The market cap of this company is about 700 million dollars. It's at the cutting edge of the technology that's blending together lots and lots of interesting things, um, you know. And now they have this massive, massive contracts, hundreds and millions of users with one of the largest uh, mobile communication or uh, telecommunication provider, China Mobile, in China. Um, and, uh, you know, as of uh, as of December 20, China Mobile had 165 million customers with 5G data plan and 775 million customers with 4G data plan. My question really is, if you think about the opportunity here, and I think this is fresh out of the press news this morning, so we don't quite know exactly how much this moves the needle for the company in terms of its revenue growth, which is only minuscule $50 million. But this is the kind of stuff with the market capitalization of only 700 million, massive, massive customers signing up with this company. We know that the Asian Asian emerging tech is very, very strong in Hong Kong with flows uh, very strong. This is the kind of stuff that basically can just propel the stock higher and higher and wouldn't even get noticed as much on the street. So I'm looking forward to your presentation on this one. Whenever you're ready, let me know. This could just be still a start for this company, WIMO, for a long journey and a very powerful rally yet to come. Uh, second item is a post-earnings update for Enlight, uh, LASR. 
uh, in which we had to recommend, uh, in which we recommended to take profits ahead of earnings. I think once the stock comes down a bit more, that's going to present another buying opportunity. So as our subscribers will know from yesterday's first read, the company posted solid beats for both the quarter end guidance, uh, EPS of 12 cents versus six cents expected, and revenue of um, $66 million uh, versus consensus 63 million, up uh, 26% year over year. Uh, just as importantly, gross margin was up to 30% versus year ago, 23%. Uh, according to management, the two primary drivers for this improvement in profitability um, were the increased product sales to a key industrial and aerospace customer outside of China, as well as the ongoing cost reductions in their semiconductor laser assembly. And then looking ahead, uh, Q1 guidance for revenue is for 56 to $62 million versus consensus 56. So a nice beat on numbers all around. Now regarding the conference call, two pieces of commentary which stood out. First off, uh, there was initially a bit of concern over the lower percentage revenue contribution from the company's high power lasers, for which China is by far the biggest customer. So the CEO, uh, Scott Keeney, said that this was really nothing to worry about because what actually happened is that the company started to see significant growth in demand uh, for its lower power lasers from outside of China. And as a result, in terms of the headline numbers, this made China's contribution uh, for the high power lasers look like it was going down, uh, when in fact sales from China was actually up uh, double digits year over year. Um, additionally, Kini also said that as usual, uh, we should expect Q1 to be slower in China because of the Lunar New Year holidays. And then conversely, uh, Q2 and Q3 tend to be the strongest quarters for China. Uh, so that was the first piece of notable commentary. Other thing which caught my attention was when management said that the electric vehicles industry in Asia Pacific has opened up more opportunities for Enlight because the parts manufacturers are having to use lasers for cutting and welding. Uh, therefore, as this EV um, industry continues to grow, that's going to start contributing more to Enlight's uh, overall revenue in addition to the more traditional um, the more traditional manufacturing applications. So um, that's essentially the update. And this is one of the stocks I'm watching and waiting to re-enter. Yeah, fantastic update. Always nice to cover the, the stocks that we have taken or covered multiple times. <clears throat> I just would like to point out that not one, not two, but four times before this discussion, we have provided the bull case for this stock, LASR in conversations and morning conversations if going all the way back to october which was the first time when chronicle discussed this and then we have followed up multiple times since then november 3rd november 6th and recently on february 9th and so here we are this is the fifth discussion on this so we've been pounding this table on this ever since the stock traded around 23 24 here it is at 40 dollars per share and now we have this earnings review um i think the quarter was great and i think the most important thing that that in the high level we basically people have the tendency to get bogged down a lot of the times by looking at you know headline data and then not really digging into it but we like to dig in like you did yourself chronicle by actually going to the earnings transcript to see what the management is telling us and frankly when i look at the same data this is still very very positive trends for the company overall i think that sequential improvement will continue throughout in 2021 the growth rate will remain strong and as long as pmis are holding up worldwide uh, manufacturing is coming back, as we saw in the most recent data as well, such as industrial production data that came out earlier this week. I think this stock will gradually continue to outperform the market for quite some time to come. So impressive update. And that's it from us, folks. Uh, we'll see you in the chat room shortly.